to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyid al wa al akhirin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'in, wa ala man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen. وارض اللهم عنا معهم أجمعين اللهم آمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam جزاكم الله خير for coming I wanted to start off by saying that making positive changes in our lives require some efforts planning, strategies, willpower, seeking the help from mentors, sheikhs, imams, educators. And many a times when we make intentions to create some changes in our lives, we tend to forget to accompany that intention with actually some actions. Intentions are very good. When we have good intentions for the good reason, for the good cause, they are good. But the question is, Are they good enough to create a lasting impact, a lasting changes in your life? Are they good enough? The answer is absolutely not. Good intentions are good, but they're not good enough. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in one one of the most beautiful narrations actually, he said that if anyone intends to do or to perform a good deed, but he didn't perform it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write it down as one single good deed. But if he intend to perform an action and he did perform it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply that by 700 times up to many more folds. So good intentions are good, but when they are accompanied by good actions, they are much more better. I was coming to Islam from the dark side in my life and I was struggling. I wanted to create that change and it was very difficult. And I have noticed that every time I will read a book, a quote, or listen to a lecture, I will get motivated, inspired. And I will be eager to to implement the teachings that I have learned from that book or that lecture and so on. But I found out also that motivations alone are not enough. And to make you remember, inshallah, these qualities and attitudes that I just uh, prepared for you, I'll be linking each of these qualities, inshallah, to the letters that spell the word strife. Is that okay? Is that okay, brothers and sisters? So I have six points for you. Each will be, inshallah, beginning with the letters of the word strife. So, coming to the first letter, S, right? S stands for seriousness. S stands for seriousness. In order for you to strive against your evil inclination, in order for you to become a better human being, you need to be really serious. You need to take a decision that from now on, no joking anymore. I need to take, to take things seriously, and I need to sweat, and I need to do what it takes to become a better human being. I always look at the life of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and how serious they were. And how they used to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to the letter, despite the fact that they were giving good news of Jannah. While they were alive. Some of them, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned them by name. Abu Bakr, you are in Jannah. Omar, you are in Jannah. Uthman, you are in Jannah. And so on, you know the name of the ten people who were granted Jannah during their lifetimes, yet they did not sit back and relax and rely on that fact. In fact, these good news that the Prophet ﷺ had given them, were that drive force that makes them even excel in acts of worship and manners. So seriousness. So the next letter is T, T for today. So seriousness, today. Today means... Don't ever say that you're going to repent later or delay your decision for later. 
If you wanted to change, my brothers and sisters, if you want an everlasting changes in your life, start now and today. Don't wait. Wallahi, tasweef at tawbah or delaying your repentance is very dangerous. You never know when are you going to die, do you? We keep on saying later, maybe later, maybe I'll quit smoking later, inshallah, inshallah. And we use inshallah as if, you know, inshallah has got so many meanings, right? Are you coming to this lecture, brother? Inshallah. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> you don't have any intentions, you know. We, we, we are misusing the words. And many of our non-Muslim friends and, and bosses and neighbors, when they hear now from us the word inshallah, they don't take us seriously. Because many of us are not using the word in a proper way. We are using the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without having any respect. And this is something really we need to reflect and we need to think about. If you're coming to the lecture and someone told you, are you coming? You have to take a decision first. You have to be 100% sure that you're coming. Only then you say, inshallah. So, what was point number one? Anyone remembers? Anyone making notes? Sisters, mashallah, many sisters are making notes. Brothers are, you know, they have that brain of Al-Bukhari. Yeah, they, don't, they don't need notes. <laughs> Number three, repent. Repent from what you have done in the past. Letter R now. Repent, my brothers and sisters. The Prophet ﷺ said, O oh Muslims, O oh people, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For I, the Prophet ﷺ, I seek forgiveness from Allah and I repent to Him once, a hundred times every single day. In one narration, 70 times, another narration, 100 times a day. Who's doing the repentance? Who's seeking Allah's forgiveness? The best of all creation. The Prophet ﷺ. How about you and I? Don't ever give up on yourself when you relapse, when you do the bad things again and again, when you strive but you can't cope with life challenges and so on. Don't ever give up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Tell them, O Muhammad, tell those, my servants, who have transgressed against themselves, who sin day and night, who have done a lot of bad deeds, tell them, despair not, from the mercy of Allah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all sins. Indeed, He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. So repent my brothers and sisters. And as we said earlier in one of the lectures, I think last time, we said the difference between repentance and forgiveness. To repent means to quit and to commit, to quit the sin and to commit never to do it again in the future. That's repentance. And forgiveness is to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what you have done in the past. So repentance is related to the future. Never to do that again. Make a commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then seek forgiveness from what you did in the past. It is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to be in a constant state of repentance and forgiveness. Past and future. <coughs> Excuse me. So, seriousness, and then what? Today, make the change today, don't delay inshallah. And then repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Letter I is for istiqama or steadfastness. Letter I is for istiqama. Every day, in every salah, my brothers and sisters in Islam, we keep on reciting Al-Fatiha, and in Al-Fatiha we ask Allah what? إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. I always wondered, wallahi, I always wondered. And my father, when he was telling me that, you know, Al-Fatiha, we cannot pray without reciting Al-Fatiha, and so on and so forth, I used to wonder, why, if we are Muslims, and that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmantu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam adina. This day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you and chose Islam for you to be your way of life. I used to wonder if that's the case, then why are we asking Allah in every salah, in every rak'ah, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Aren't we already guided? Why we should keep on repeating the same thing again and again? Then I came to know later on that the word اِهْدِنَ is a very broad word in Arabic, mashallah, which means three things. اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ means, Ya Allah, show me the way. O oh Allah, take me there. Not just to show me the way, no, take me there. Help me out to find a way. And number three, keep me there, steadfast until the end. That is the meaning of istiqama. It's to remain upon the straight path until the end. Letter V is for virtue and manners and ethics. Many Muslims have focused on one aspect of the deen and neglect, neglected other aspects of the religion. And one of the things which were, were neglected is perfecting our manners. Although the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ جَزَكَ I have been sent to perfect manners. One of the earliest narrations of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ taught us that your acts of worship alone will not take you to Jannah. That is our ultimate goal, right? Is to be in Jannah with the Prophet ﷺ in Al-Firdaus Al-A'la insha'Allah. Look at the Prophet, look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He speaks about acts of worship in the Quran. Every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will talk about one of the pillars of Islam, whether salah, sawm, fasting, or hajj, or any of the acts of worship, He will remind you that this act of worship is actually serving a particular manner. So when He talks about salah, for example, He says, Inna salata. تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Salah, the five daily salah, my brothers and sisters, that you're performing day and night, the main purpose of them is what? Is to prevent you from committing shameful activities and illegal acts. That's the purpose of salah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, imagine if in front of you, in front of your house, a river, which you bathe yourself in it for five times a day, will there be dirt left on you anymore by the end of the day? Naturally not. That is the purpose of salah, to cleanse you from your sins, spiritual. That is the purpose of salah, is to prevent you from committing these illegal acts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He talks about charity in the Qur'an, He says, take from the wealth portion to give to the poor. Why? So that you can purify them with it. So the purpose of zakah is to purify you, my brothers and sisters. is to teach you how to be merciful, generous, every act of worship was imposed upon us to make us a better human being. So, <clears throat> the last last point, last letter is E, and that is for emulate. Emulate the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is that is one of the most important point if you wanted to create changes in your life, to live according to the lifestyle of your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you love Allah, obey Allah subhanahu wa taala. Show me. Show me an action that will prove that you really love Allah. Show me an action that you really, that you really will prove that you love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Emulate the Prophet. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one of the narrations he said, Alaykum bi sunnati, wa sunnat al khulafa al mahdiyeen min ba'di. Stick to my sunnah, and the sunnah of my, you know, the rightly guided caliphs who will come after me. Addu alayha bin nawajib. You know, literally he said, bite on it with your mullah teeth. Don't let go of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Imitate him, emulate him, read his biography. I always say in my lectures that the biography of the Prophet ﷺ, his life have changed my life. It offers me the guidance that I needed. Look at Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu arda walking in the nearby the Kaaba and he looked at the black stone and he started talking to the black stone. Telling to the black stone, I know that you're a stone, you can't harm nor benefit anyone. But had I not seen the Prophet ﷺ kissing you, I would have never kissed you. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. They used to perform their actions based on how the Prophet ﷺ used to live his life. 
<coughs> Excuse me. This is it, my brothers and sisters in Islam. I will leave the rest for my Shaykh, Brother Wahaj, inshallah, to continue. But to sum up, if you want to create changes in your life, motivations alone are not enough. Intentions, good intentions alone are not enough. You have to accompany that by actions. You have to force yourself literally to do what is right and what is pleasing to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people who listen to the reminders and follow.